2,000 years ago, there was an invincible demon capable of lifting even Thais Karla on his lap. Not even the gods could fight this demon. His name is Enos Voldegode. Due to his fame and strength, he was recognized as the king of demons. And because all of his wishes came true, he also ended up being known as a tyrant. But somehow, this demon died and now, it is said that he will revive. There he was, helping a white-haired girl named Misha. When out of nowhere an extra who thinks he is strong started to flatter and threaten Anos Kuin with a flame that he says burns even the gods. In response, Anos blew the flame, and just telling the guy to stay still, he had to obey, as he was too weak compared to our protagonist. Soon after, to enter the Demon King's Academy, our protagonist had to pass an aptitude exam, which consists of a deadly battle against another candidate. The battle ended up being against that extra, and now he is wearing anti-magic armor so as not to obey our protagonist's lines. However, our protagonist felt offended at having to fight against such a weak being. So to give him some advantage, he promised to defeat him without taking a single step. That said, he destroyed the extra with just the beat of his heart. Even though he lost, the extra didn't want to give up. And to solve this, Anos made a contract with the guy, where he had to make the extra give up the fight to defeat him. With the contract made, Anos Kuin began to kill and revive the extra using a magic called Ingle. After that, our protagonist went for a magical assessment, and in front of him, that girl named Misha was shown to have quite an impressive amount of magic. Anos, on the other hand, ended up breaking the magic crystal due to its absurd amount of mana. And finally, some questions were asked about what the candidates know about the history of the best demon king of all. After that, Anos met with Misha who was waiting for him outside. So he took her to dinner at his house because his family would love to meet her. And when he enters his house, we discover that the guy only has one month to live. Soon after, he introduced Misha Necron to his mother and his parents were very proud that his son already had a suitor. And after a very pleasant night, our protagonist decided to accompany Misha to her home. But on the way, they ended up being approached by the demon king Leorgindu, who revealed that a commoner demon is not accepted into the academy, and as years have passed, he will have to be eliminated just as others have been. In response to this, Anos says that a true demon king doesn't have noble blood or anything like that. He just has enough power to force everyone to bow down to him. And continuing to make the mistake, Leorg tells everyone to to use magic against Anos. However, their magic fails because they fear such a high-level opponent. So, Leorg tries to use an origin spell against Anos. However, an origin magic does not affect its own origin. In short, the guys cannot try to use Anos magic against himself. After explaining this, Anos revives the extra who had been killed by his own brother as a hate-filled zombie. And now, this extra wants to take revenge on his brother. To end the transformation into a zombie, Anos tells Leorg to call his brother's name, remembering their family ties. However, in this era, it appears that the brothers do not have the same bonds as they did 2,000 years ago. At the end of that night, Anos was forced to resolve this entire situation alone, reviving even his idiot brothers. Once this was done, he announced to everyone that he is the only true demon king of tyranny. Episode 2 After that, in a flashback, we see how Anos died. Basically, when the hero was once again trying to kill him, instead of killing again a hero who practically never dies, Anos, already tired of this life of war, decided to use all his power and life to create a barrier that would separate all the kingdoms, thus bringing an end to the war between all races. This idea seemed good to the hero, and so he decided to help Anos with this. Upon accomplishing this great feat, Anos thanked the hero canon for helping him, and promised to meet him again in the future to become his friend this time. After that, we see Anos being born and already telling his parents his name, and back to the present time. Despite having a perfect score in all the tests, our protagonist was placed in the Demon King's school as a deviant, so he came to the conclusion that something was wrong, and the error was as follows. For some reason, the name of the Demon King that everyone knows in this world is Avas Dilhevia. Furthermore, according to Misha, the Demon King was someone who only cared about demons and their noble blood, and this was obviously false information. Then, continuing with his studies at the school of those who can be a Demon King, the professor finally arrives introducing herself as Amelia Rudwell. She wants to separate the class into groups and need some people as leaders to use a magic called Gize, which in this case is a magic used by a leader to increase the power of his troops. Anos applies to be a leader, but the teacher tries to say that a deviant cannot. In response, he says he will prove his ability and asks her to form a pact using a magic called Zekt with him. She does this, and if he couldn't prove his ability, he would be expelled. But for Anos, this was easy. All he had to do was say that the magic circle of the magic called Gize that they use is wrong, and that using the true 
true circle, its power increases by two, so he ends up being accepted. After that, the teacher asks the leaders to introduce themselves. Dai the first to introduce herself was a certain Sasha Necron, Misha's older sister. Soon after, our protagonist introduced himself as the Demon King of Tyranny himself. After that, Sasha went to Anos to say that her sister is a magical doll and that she shouldn't even be alive. In response, Anos says that even magical dolls have souls and are alive. And this angers Sasha, so she tries to threaten Anos with her Eye of Destruction. However, her eye has no effect on him, as he also has the Eye of Destruction, and his is much more powerful than hers. In the end, after feeling Sasha's power, Anos invited her to his group, so Sasha could be close to her sister. However, Sasha put her foot down saying she didn't want to be near that doll. After classes, Sasha appeared calling our protagonist to a duel, and whoever lost this duel would become completely submissive to the other. So, as Anos needed meat for lunch, he accepted this dispute. Only after one week did their battle take place, and their battle ended up being about creating castles, defending them, and attacking those of their enemies. And well, while Misha took care of creating the castles, Anos used creative mode magic, the famous Bara TP, and appeared in front of the enemy's castle. In addition to doing this, he invaded their communication and said that their castle was too light. Having said that, he lifted the castle from the enemies with just a single hand and after spinning them around a lot, he threw the castle away. So to defeat Anos, all of his enemies unite and use a magic called Geograze, and the fact that they can use it makes Anos praise their hard training. In response, he uses a simple fire spell, which nullifies their spell and almost kills them. In the end, our protagonist puts Sasha to be part of his group, not only for Misha's sake, but because he also thought Sasha's eyes were the most beautiful he had ever seen in his life. After that, he took Sasha to dinner at his house and thanks to him, the two sisters ended up making peace. And like a good devil, our protagonist accompanied the two to their house. And before he left, Sasha thanked him for helping her make peace with her sister. Since her gratitude was so great, she went there and gave Anos her first kiss on the lips, and he was pleased to have received something so important. Episode 3 After he left, Sasha told Misha that she and Anos are the only ones who look into her eyes. The rest of the people are afraid of being cursed. After that, Sasha asked for forgiveness for calling Misha a doll, and her sister forgave her. The next day in class, Misha was asking Anos what gift she can give her sister. In response, he said that the girl would like anything she gave. And when Sasha arrives, one of the seven elder emperors appears to teach a lesson. Obviously, everyone respects the guy, but Anos gets up and asks if the guy doesn't know him. He says no, so our protagonist puts his hand in the guy's face to read his mind. After doing so, Anos realized that the guy actually had no memories about him, so he left to talk better with this former servant of his after his class. After class, the elder emperor revealed that he remembered Anos. In response, our protus said he used a magic from his origin called Revide to bring back the guy's lost memories. However, the memories he received back were still about a demon king named Avus, and discovering this started to make Anos think that maybe this Avus guy really exists. And because he feels something nostalgic about Anos, the elder emperor will remain neutral for now. After that, in the schoolyard, we see that Sasha's old partners are pissed, as Anos doesn't want anyone other than the two girls in their group. Then, as there was no way to talk to the guys, Sasha got involved with Anos and Misha, and so they went to an exam that consists of entering a dungeon to kill monsters and collect items. And since this is the castle of years, he decided to enter last with the girls, as he knows the whole way. Along the way, he told Misha that he knows a place where she should find a good gift for her sister. And since the two are twins turning 15 years old, Anos told Misha to get something for her too. So along the way, Anos passed through the secret passages using only his brute strength. There, Sasha got an important staff that she wanted. Misha went to get a gift for her sister, which ended up being a powerful coat too. And to Misha, Anos gave a ring with the power to freeze the seven seas. And when Misha gave the gift to her sister and was happy, Sasha betrayed her by sticking a knife in her sister's chest when Anos was away. When he sees this, he says that Sasha is a terrible traitor, as her sister is still alive. Sasha even tries to plot against Anos, but she can't against him. Furthermore, the Misha she stabbed was just an illusion illusion that Anos created when he sensed she was planning it. After being defeated, Misha asked Anos to let Sasha escape. And after he did that, Misha explained that her life will end when she turns 15. Episode 4 In short, Misha is a piece of Sasha's soul that was separated during birth. Now, when the two reach 15 years of age, they will unite and become a single stronger being. The saddest thing is that throughout her life, Misha was resigned to this. 
However, after Anos became her friend, she began to have more desire to live, and as our protagonist knows no regrets and things he can't do, he decided to fulfill Misha's wish. So, he went as Sasha and Misha quickly said that she wanted to get good with her before she died, and as our protagonist wanted to know if Sasha really hates her sister, Sasha promised to tell the truth if he manages to perform two magic circles that she wants to set up. He accepts the challenge, so she makes two very specific magic circles, and in response, Anos masterfully recreates these circles for her, winning the dispute. However, Sasha actually wanted to use these spells to keep her sister alive, because during these 15 years Misha never really lived, so the only solution Sasha found was to give up her life for her sister. However, for this magic to work, Misha would have to hate her, and the girl doesn't cooperate with that. In the end, Sasha asks Anos to make her disappear and for him to keep Misha alive. In response to this, our protagonist said that he will change the past by making Misha Sasha's twin sister. This magic will be performed by the two with the help of Anos. However, they must believe in him as the true demon king. Out of nowhere, the Ivis Necron appears, cutting Anos in half, but our protagonist was already waiting for him. So he quickly defeats him and starts his magic to change the past. However, when he starts the magic, the god of time appears to try to stop him. He takes the Ivis guy and returns his body in time, completely removing his injuries. After that, he gives his power to the guy to defeat Anos. With this, Ivis now has the power to manipulate time a little. And as Ivis advanced on him, Anos told the two girls to just believe that he is the true demon king and that he can grant any wish. As he said this, he was hit by the Ivis. However, normal logic does not apply to Anos. So after losing his body, he revived himself. In response to this, Ivis stopped time completely. But Anos' mana is gigantic to the point of allowing him to move when time stands still. So, while the guy was attacking him, Anos kept telling the two girls to believe and have faith that he can help them. Them. In this, they finally gain confidence and begin to have faith that he can even change the past. With this, Anos' magic to change their past finally activates and the process begins to happen. Once that was done, our protagonist summoned his sword that destroys everything it touches and hits Ivis' head with it. The guy tries to go back in time to heal himself, but the Sword of Destruction literally destroys even the past and future versions. So Ivis was the base, and in the end, he continued to believe that Anos was not his true master. However, despite destroying the guy, our protagonist revived him and gave him back the guy's memories that he still has. Once that was done, Anos asked his subordinate to research more about this demon king who stole his place in the hearts and minds of the demons. And after all these events, Anos asked the girls to come back with him, as he needs to get his top grade soon. In the end, he put the ring on Misha's hand and praised this world he created. After all, he has been having a lot of fun since he was reincarnated. Episode 5. Soon after, we are taken to the past and we see that Anos had a very powerful swordsman who served him. After defeating an aquatic woman, he asked Anos for permission to reincarnate, and Anos promised to help him when he reincarnated. Out of nowhere, the hero cannon appeared and Anos' servant went to face another opponent, leaving Anos alone to deal with the hero who always revived. After these scenes, we return to the present time, where the teacher wants to give only a seven to our main characters because the legendary cedar they got was stolen. In response, in response to this, Inos stuck his hand inside a student's body, took the cedar and gave it to the teacher's hand, telling her to try harder if she really wants to harm him. After that, a student calls our protagonist to go with her to a place where she and several other girls believe that he is the real demon king. So after introducing the place full of his fans, the girl asks our protagonist to allow her and her friends to join his group. So, he asks the girls to show him their determination, and they agree. A while later, in an exam that involved removing swords from the the floor, Anos said that there was only one sword in the world that he cannot wield, and it is not Guts's sword but the sword of the hero cannon. Having said that, he pulls out a sword from the ground and a new transfer student also pulls one out. Soon after, both defeated the evaluators. After that, the rookie student decided to become Anos' subordinate, but he said he would only accept him if he showed his determination in a battle. And to make things even better, our protagonist orders his fans to join the transfer student and face him together. So the next day, they're battle was on, so while the girls were facing each other,
together. Anos went to face the new student alone. Arriving there, the guy revealed that he had given his magical power to his teammates. Therefore, he would only face Anos in a beating. In response to this, Anos picked up a stick, said he would defeat him with it. Die while the girl's battle was fierce. The transfer student was evolving more and more during the battle, as if his battle memories were coming back to him. And back to the girls. Well, Sasha and Misha had to appeal using the power of the sisters' union to win. And right after that happened, Anos' battle against the new student was getting more and more intense. And in truth, the two were having fun. Because for a long time, neither of them had an opponent they could hit with will. During their battle, the ground became flat and in the end, Anos won. But his piece of wood was cut by Ray. Therefore, he decided to accept him as a partner. After all, everything indicates that Ray is an acquaintance from 2,000 years ago. Episode 6 After all that, Anos obviously took everyone to eat at his house. And at school, the next day, Ray and Anos were chosen to participate in a magic sword tournament. Obviously, this is a chance for Anos and Ray to duel. But our protagonist found it a little strange that he was chosen. After all, the nobles just want to see it sinking. Out of nowhere, Misa said that she met with the elder emperor named Melhase. And apparently, this old man wants to see you. He goes to the guy, and even though he can't remember Anos, his origin still recognizes him as his master. That said, Melhais tells everything he remembers. Basically, after Anos climbed the barrier dividing the world, he was sent to another land. And after only 100 years, he managed to return to the demon kingdom. However, when he returned, Everyone only talked about this guy Avus. This Melhanes recommended that Anos not participate in the Magic Sword Tournament. Then during a dinner, he said he intended not to participate. His mother said he should, and she almost said that his father went to get a Magic Sword for his son. And since these days Misha made food for Anos, he decided to thank her by fulfilling her wish. In response, she said she wanted to go out with him. And during her walk, she revealed that she wanted to buy Sasha a gift. That said, she took Anos to a miniature castle store. And according to Misha, the smaller these castles are, the more they are worth. Then, Anos asks if she wants to see him do an amazing, and she says yes. Then Anos goes on a rampage and creates an entire city in miniature. When the store seller saw this, she even offered her soul in exchange. But Anos said that it was already used. After that, on a bench in the square, Misha began to thank the years for always helping her. To repay him, she promised to become stronger to help him. In response to this, Anos said that he is not perfect and that in fact the only thing he is good at is destruction. And according to him, Misha is his opposite, being good at creation magic. So if she trains, she can be very useful to him in the future. That same day, Anos and Misha stopped in front of a hospital, and out of nowhere, Ray showed up to visit someone. Obviously, Anos offered his help if anyone needed to be cured, but Ray said he didn't need it. And because he felt the guy was a little strange, Anos decided to ask Ivis to investigate him too. And the next day, before the tournament began, the cat-shaped Ivis appeared with some information. Basically, he found out that Ray's mother has a practically incurable disease. As for the tournament, it seems that there are really people planning something for Anos, and because of the setups, Anos intended not to participate. However, upon hearing his mother defending him while people spoke badly of him, and seeing that his father got him a magic sword, at that moment, he remembered that he is invincible and left to make his family happy. Episode 7 During the duel, he defeats and breaks his enemy's sword. He also says that a sword made with love should not be underestimated. This makes the guy's father cry with joy, while several blacksmiths were admiring the sword he made. After that, Ray appeared to say he was going to kill Anos and Tals. Then the two attack each other and almost kill each other. And when he almost held Ray's heart, Anos realized that the guy is trapped by a magical contract that could destroy his origin. Furthermore, Anos also believes that the guy's mother is being held hostage. After discovering this, Anos won all his battles of the day. He left his magic sword with his mother because she kept asking for it. And then he gave TP to Ray's mother. There he discovered that the woman is from the spirit race and she is disappearing because she needs her beliefs and traditions to be followed somewhere. However, she doesn't even know what her race's beliefs and traditions are. And according to Ray's mother, he was always lonely because he was too strong. But since he met Anos, he started to be happier because now he had someone who could even defeat him. So to resolve this a little, Misa decided to offer a little of her origins to Ray's mother. And this will only work because Misa is a hybrid of a demon and a spirit. To accomplish this, Anos creates new magic from scratch and begins the process. Die while this was going on, Anos' mother was being attacked by the teacher who wanted to steal Anos' magic sword by all 
means, Anas' faithful followers fight bravely, using even their last strength to protect the guy's mother. And when everything seemed lost, Anas appeared, and using a magic called Int, he healed his mother and all the girls. And after that, Anas promised to never forget these girls' names for the rest of his life. In the end, because he was quite irritated, Anas grabbed teacher Amelia by the neck, and then he killed her, because she didn't want to stop this talk of nobility. This done, he revived her as a hybrid woman, and he even placed a curse on her, so that she would be a half-breed no matter what incarnation she had. Maybe then, she can understand how distorted her view of the world is. Later that day, Ray discovered Misa trying to treat his mother, so as Misa's origin was in danger, he fainted her. Soon after, Ray's mother woke up and asked him to focus on being happy and not worry about her. However, Ray won't let his mother die without a fight. Episode 8 Then the next day, the final duel between Anos and Ray is organized. However, the rule for victory is that the enemy's necklace is broken, and the necklace of years was sucking the magic out of him. So during the fight, Ray says he was told to try to delay the fight so Anos gets weaker. However, he went against the contract he made offering his life and decided to do everything his way, so he and his mother would die without regrets. Upon hearing this, Anos became excited as this is the real Ray he knows. Then, after Anos told Ray to just fight without worrying about anything, the two started an insane battle, which couldn't even be seen by ordinary people. The fight went from strength to strength, until the two decided to end the fight quickly. Then in a final attack, Anos lost an arm, but managed to fatally hit Ray. At that exact moment, a dimensional magic was activated and Anos was sent to the prison that Melhais made. And now, he will have to fight with half the mana he has, against three ancient demons. Out of nowhere, Ray gets up, simply eliminating the two elders by surprise, leaving only Melhase missing. And the explanation for Ray being alive is because our protagonist broke the curse that affected his origin in the act of that final blow. That's why he won't die because of the contract. Not only that, but Anos cured Ray, and now it's two against one. However, Melhase tries to use Ray's mother as a hostage. In response, Anos attacks him, and Ray manages to go to where his mother was. Now, Anos was left alone to have a X1 against Melhase. Then, using our protagonist's own magic, the elderly mage began to attack Anos. In addition, he used some of the barrier magic that Anos used to divide the world against our protagonist. But even so, the old man couldn't defeat the years. So he hid in a barrier and tried to attack Ray. However, even though the guy was in another dimension, Anos managed to defend him, die while protecting Ray. Anos made an anti-magic sword so he could defend himself and his mother. However, his sword breaks and Anos is forced to defend him again. In the end, as the situation was difficult, Ray's mother said she would help her son with her spirit magic. And even though this could lead to death, the woman moved on, transforming into a sword for Ray to use. He uses the sword and shows his mother his skills, even managing to hit Melhais within his defense. However, after he does this, his mother disintegrates in front of him. Then the old man's barrier was broken, so Anos infiltrated it to defeat him. In response to this, the old old man trapped him with Anos' own barrier and magic. However, after being pressured, our protagonist ended up awakening yet another part of his power that had not yet returned since he was reincarnated. So, he first cut off the legs of the old man who wanted to retreat, and when he tried to fight, our protagonist hit him in the middle of the head, hitting a small being that was controlling his mind. Furthermore, he also freed the other two demons from the control of the Delhevia grandfather. At that moment, Avis himself appeared watching Anos. In the end, our protagonist declares to everyone that he won thanks to his father's love in building this sword. Plus, he healed Ray and then used Ingol to revive the guy's mother. And this was only possible thanks to his speeches about there being something besides magic in this world that gives people strength, which in this case is love. And Anos realized that this was the legend about the woman, the moment he won his first battle and dedicated his father's sword to her. In short, once again our protagonist did the impossible here for the sake of his friends. After that, Anos received the glory of victory from Sasha and told Misha that this tournament was quite interesting. Episode 9 So we go back to the past and see that many years ago, Anos, tired of war, went to the human kingdom to call the hero cannon to talk. At the time, he was attacked by a human who, using the power of other humans, tried to eliminate Anos. But the guy failed miserably and almost got killed. And at this guy's request, the hero cannon went to Anos to stop defeat. After that, a new teacher announces to all the students 
students at the Demon King's Academy that they will do an exchange at the Hero Academy of the Human Kingdom. Of everyone present there, not a single demon knew what a hero was. Upon discovering this, Anos decided to train his group partners as they are still very weak. He helps each person to evolve by giving tips, and after all that still gives a special sword that can cut things according to the user's will. And to get to the Hero Academy, students will have to take a long 10-day walk. However, Anos teleports them directly there, using his creative mode. So while people want to do some things, Anos decided to investigate this Hero Academy. There he is happy to see that the place is in true peace. And during a walk with Sasha, Anos makes the girl promise that if something happens that his eyes can't see, she will use her beautiful eyes to help him. And she agreed to do this, as long as he no longer treats her like a child. After that, they went to the door of the Hero Academy and Anos came out, opening the door. Out of nowhere, a girl appeared saying they weren't allowed there, but Anos said they came from Dilhade. Then the girl introduces herself as Eleanor and says she is a third year at the Hero Academy. And as Anos wanted to learn about the great hero, Eleanor took the two of them to learn more about the history of this academy. And continuing with the tour with Eleanor, she says that a long time ago, the hero defeated the Demon King and created the barriers that protect humanity. Upon hearing this, Sasha gets angry as it is a lie. But Anos calms her down, saying that this version must have spread to make humanity more comfortable as they are protected by a supposed barrier from the great hero. And continuing with his questions, Anos discovers that in the lands of humans, the name of the demon king is also Avus. And when Anos asks about the hero's reincarnation, Eleanor says that his seven origins were reincarnated in different bodies. And currently, students with origins are studying in a special class. Out of nowhere, two of these guys appear and according to the years, they are not the reincarnation of the great hero, as the guy has seven compact origins within one. one one of these guys gets angry when he hears this and tries to attack Anos. But with just a blink of an eye, he sent the guy flying away. After that, Anos leaves school, and when he was leaving, Eleanor says that the hero was murdered 2,000 years ago, and if the years still look for him, he won't find him, because the hero is already gone. Then she said something that the guys cut out in the editing, just to force us to keep watching. Episode 10 And after 10 days, the other students from the Demon King Academy arrived at the Hero Academy, and inside the Hero's Academy, the third year of the Demon's Academy will even ask if he didn't cheat when coming coming to the Hero's Academy. In response, Anos praised the guy for arriving in two days. In the end, this guy said that he didn't recognize Anos as the real Demon King, and that he didn't like him saying that. After that, with the demons and heroes gathered, both of the best third-year students were asked to show off their magic. In response to this, the Hero Academy guy created and amplified a sword, and the demon, when it came to showing his power, went to perform a transformation spell. However, for some reason, he was unable to activate it. Upon seeing this, Anos said that humans made a barrier that prevents demon magic around the animal. However, if a spell superior to the barrier is cast, it overcomes the protection. That being said, it causes the hamster to transform into a hideous monster. And soon everyone starts to discuss whether or not Anos is the real Demon King. After that, while Ivis was giving information to Anos, the girls appeared asking him to go for a walk. And there at the human fair, they found Ray with Misa, so you don't get in the way of their love. They just watched from afar. After that, everyone was talking about the gift Misa received. And according to Anos, this gift is related to something that couples did when they were going to separate, but apparently, it is currently given as a sign of love and union. After this conversation, another dispute began. This time Anos wanted to participate, but this guy Rivest insisted on going to represent the demons and promised not to lose. They went, but they took a beating again, as the humans filled the sea water with holy water, and this not only made the heroes snort, but also left the demons weak. To make matters worse, Rivest guy was hit by stigma magic that doesn't allow him to heal. Upon seeing this, Anos goes there to heal the guy but he refuses. However, upon seeing his teacher crying, the guy ends up allowing Anos to heal him. After that, Anos decided to participate in a second round, and when he complained about the holy water, the heroes ordered him to dry the lake. In response to this, the guy actually dried up the entire lake using a giant fireball. So, the heroes set out for the new battle arena, believing they could defeat Anos using their fake hero powers. Episode 11 The enemies now believe that Anos really is the demon king. 
however, as they hear a voice telling them to kill the demons in their heads, they firmly believe that they are the reincarnation of the great hero cannon. So, they start the battle by raising a barrier and Anos attacks it. However, an unknown girl is capable of destroying Anos flames. So Misha comes up with the idea of creating protective castles within their barrier, and Anos agrees to protect her while she does so. That said, it gives TP into enemy barriers, and a fight starts. While Misha was creating the castle, to stop the years, the guys got together to bind him with chains that totaled 1088 anti-demon seals. However, Anos managed to defeat them just by expanding his magic, and the guys just didn't die, because their barrier protects and heals them of everyone. The one who seems to be the strongest is a little girl with lifeless eyes, and after the first blow of the year, his companions arrive with everything, forcing the enemies to protect participate in several one versus one. The first to fight was Sasha, and she simply easily defeated the first enemy, Ray, in addition to collecting the enemy's sacred swords, also went there and used them to create a stigma on the enemy to defeat Anos. The two enemies who were going crazy decided to use the support of the entire human population to give them power, and now with everything at peace, there are more than one million humans in this city, and that really made Tutu quite strong. However, with the support of only eight girls, Anos was able to receive more power than the two heroes. Then while the eight girls sang, Anos started beating them up. Furthermore, Anos said that 2,000 years ago, feelings towards the hero canon were much stronger than those of humans now. Out of nowhere, everyone starts to hear a voice of pure hatred, telling the demons to be killed, and before Anos could investigate what this is, the enemy heroine attacked him, blowing up her own origin to take him with her. This obviously doesn't work, but for some reason she keeps appearing several times and blowing herself up. Angered, Anos holds the girl's own origin before she explodes. When he does this, he hears Eleanor herself asking him to go to the temple to put an end to this issue of the girl blowing up her own origin. He tells Misha to go there. However, upon arriving there, she is attacked several times by the Hero Academy instructor. Then, before she died, Anos de TP went there, defeating the guy and then healing Misha. Once this is done, he kills the hero's instructor and revives him asking his objective. In response, the guy tells the demon to fuck off. So, Anos uses a magic that reveals the person's true soul and in his case, the guy is a real monster. Since the guy still intended to fight, Anos Anos removed the guy's origin and told him that neither he nor those students are the hero canon because the true hero had several origins and even if one of them was destroyed, he always came back. In short, the hero was a guy who fought and lost several times, but he never gave up even though it was very painful for him. After doing this, Anos went to Eleanor and there the girl told him that she is not human but a magician. Episode 12 So after freeing Eleanor, she was able to cancel the mass explosion that everyone was about to commit due to a manipulation magic that had been activated within the human barrier. And going back to Eleanor, basically she said that she and another spell called a suck were created using the origin of a certain commander Jurga. This guy hated demons more than anything, that's why he kept his will alive in these spells. However, the buff magic he created called a suck absorbed all of his will, and so when the human heroes boosted themselves, they were filled with hate. As for her, Eleanor no longer hated the demons, but she continued to be used to create clones of herself that explode. In the end, she asked Anos to destroy her, because she can't stand living like this anymore. However, the children she raised ask their mother to stay alive, and Anos promises to make their wish come true. Out of nowhere, that guy he had just killed appears and apparently, he is also a clone that keeps being created infinitely, and continuing with the sudden appearances, out of nowhere the guy Avus appears with the three demon emperors that are protagonist had not yet corrected his mind, he takes the sword that was once used by the great hero and promises to act to correct the world. That said, the guy disappears, and then, he announces to all the demons that he has returned to life and that now, he will end humans because even after 2,000 years they have not changed. To avoid this conflict, Anos met with his emperors who have already had their minds fixed, and in addition to the emperors, Sasha and Misha also want to help him. Before going to fight, Ray went to pick up Misa, but he stopped before and just took his part of the necklace and promised to come back to her. After that, our protagonist told everyone that their objective 
is to stop both sides of the war without killing anyone. So Misha and Sasha stayed to stop a bunch of demon soldiers. Rey and Misa stayed close to the border, preventing the demons from passing. The emperors on the Anos side were in charge of stopping the emperors on the Avu side. All this while Anos fixes Avus. And when Anos got close to where the enemy was supposed to be, he received a message from Misa saying that Rey was missing. And upon receiving this message, Anos finally found Avus. And after the first exchange of blows with Avus, Anos soon felt that the guy in front of him is the hero cannon, who is actually also Rey. Episode 13. Then in front of Anos, the hero cannon revealed that even after what Anos did for the peace of the world, Jirga continued to want to kill him after he was reincarnated. Therefore, Cannon used his sword to cut off Anos' destiny to revive as the adored demon king, and as time passed, the name Avs became the name of the true demon king. And now, the hero's plan was to die like the demon king. By doing so, the hate magic of the man who killed him would end, and so peace would reign again. And since Anos has already done his part by sacrificing himself, the hero wants him to just watch the kindness of the human in front of him. However, as Anos is a tyrannical guy, he only wants to carry out his will, and his current desire is to stop Cannon's plan. So he started fighting the guy, destroying his origins one by one, and when only a single origin was left, the hero decided to appeal using two swords. So Anos let himself be hit, and in the end, he changed hero Cannon's clothes and his own, so that everyone could see the result of this battle, as if the demon king himself had died. And while he was struck, Anos told all the demons to wait until he returned to life, so that they could seek revenge, and until that happens, he will not allow retaliation. Thus, Anos dies being the hero who saved Cannon's life. After his death, the hero Cannon said that the war was over, and that the humans should retreat. However, the magic of anger against the demons was activated on a large scale, causing all humans to seek revenge against the demons. In response to this, Cannon tries to eliminate this magic that Jirga created, but he cannot destroy a sacred magic with a sacred sword. To give that morale in battle, the two sisters use the final technique of the Necron family to unite their origins becoming one person. In response, Jirga tries to make Eleanor's clones blow themselves up. Then, everyone starts trying hard to stop them, and when everything seemed lost and everyone would be blown up by the more than 10,000 copies of Eleanor, Anos simply came back to life, using a magic that makes him come back to life after dying by receiving a blow he has already received before, obviously a magic he created himself. In response to this, the Jirga manipulates humans to the maximum to reach a level of power that can go against Anos. His first attack, Cannon stops, but the guy manages to send Cannon away and then reach the age. That's because I didn't have much magic after being revived. Our protagonist asks his union of fans to sing and dance in his name. And during their show, Durga tried to attack the demon army, and Eleanor started trying hard to protect them. And at that moment, all the soldiers looked at Anos up in the sky and finally understood that he is the true demon king. Therefore, they began to surrender all their power to him. In the end, to the sound of the music from Anos fans, our protagonist and the hero Cannon defeated Jirga together, as he is the source of all human hatred. And when he dies, Jirga can see his family again, who had been killed by demons a long time ago. After that, Sasha and Misha want to get Anos, but he still has things to do, how to transform Eleanor into his magic, so that she will never be used in the wrong way by anyone again. Furthermore, he assumed responsibility for the 10,000 copies of it, and after all this, he returned all the demons back to the city. And the anime ended with him taking Eleanor or to his house. There again his mother and father thought he had found another woman, and apparently, he already has 10,000 children. The story begins with a celestial father god, Nascalia saying that he chose the uterus of the great mother spirit Leno to receive his son. She refuses, but he says that this has already been decided by the gods. She tries to attack him, but he says that she should just obey, as the orders of a god are absolute. That said, he forces Leno's power against herself, and when he would become pregnant with a divine child, Anos appears using his famous geo graze on Deus and then hits him in the chest. The god tries to go against the demon king's power of tyranny, using his divine commands to stay alive. However, Anos made him turn to dust, as this parade of divine powers are weak in the face of his power. Once that was done, Anos appointed his right-hand man, Shin Reglia, to care for and protect the mother spirit Leno. Alone with Shin, she says she doesn't need help. Upon hearing this, the guy threatens to take his own life if she doesn't need him. So the mother spirit ends up allowing his presence to protect 
protect her. Alone with Shin, she can finally relax and even take a nap. At the time, Anos gave all his power to create a barrier that separated the world and even after his master ceased to exist, Shin continued to protect the mother spirit. And amidst an attack by magical beasts in the fairy home, Anos appeared in a small version. After that, the scene cuts to the current Anos, reuniting with his friends and as always, he even uses his skills to evaluate the bows in Sasha's hair. Soon after, everyone is commenting on Lei's relationship with the girl who appears to be dating him. After the pleasant chat, everyone goes to the classroom in there. We see that Anos is still looked down upon by his classmates, and from now on, some students from the Hero Academy will study with the demons and obviously, it had to be that girl that Anos transformed into his own magic. In addition to this news, a new teacher is appointed to give some classes to everyone. The guy's name is Ertame, and he has been a demon for over 2,000 years, and in front of everyone, he said that the real demon king is the years, and even made everyone bow down to our protagonist. However, Anos said that the world is now at peace, and that demons no longer need a king. So if no one wants to recognize him, that's fine. That being said, he said that the Heavenly Father God knew Scalia's disguise was terrible. But Ertamade undoes his disguise and tries to tell everyone that Anos is an existence that harms the natural order of gods, at which point some students say that gods do not exist, taking an aggressive look at Nuscalia. At that moment, the students begin to be hanged by a power that eliminates anyone who tries to be hostile against a god. So Anos tells Deus not to involve the students in this, and for the guy to continue with his evil and even say that if he dies the world will end. Anos draws his sword of destruction and eliminates the god. Once that's done, he revives the guy again and seals 90% of his power, and Anos is now only capable of acting with such moderation, because this peaceful world taught him that. After easily defeating this god, Anos still forced him to continue teaching the students. And now, the concern of Anos and everyone is not the fact of having a god teaching them, but rather, what the god said before trying to eliminate the students, he said that the vessel of the son of god would awaken and the two eliminate. So, Anos decided to send Melhais to investigate this for him. When Anos left, his friends decided to look for this vessel of the Son of God on their own. After that, outside, Lei was alone with Misa, and in their romance, they were promising to take care of each other. And when the two shared a kiss, Lei felt the presence of someone watching him. When noticed, the guy appears and says he came to deliver a message from Misa's family. In the meantime, we see Anos telling his fan club that he wants them to sing to all the demons that the demon king is Anos Voldegode and that he has returned to life. Out of nowhere, Anos received a magical call from Sasha saying that a student was attacked at the gym. And according to the guy, Professor Manu was kidnapped. Fortunately, before everything happened, he cast a tracking spell on the enemy. Now, Misha and Sasha go after after this enemy, believing they can defeat him thanks to the training they did with Anos. Our protagonist, upon arriving at Melhais, found him dead. The man who did this is one of those who has been alive for more than 2,000 years, and because he cannot defeat Anos, he wants to defeat our protagonist in a battle of wits. At the same time that this was going on, that guy who came to bring a message from Misa's father went there and stuck a sword in the girl's chest, saying that he received orders from the King of Curses to get to the girl's origins. And now, the intelligence challenge that the guy in front of the year is proposing is that our protagonist discovers who is the vessel of God among his subordinates. Thanks to the great effort of the enemy to propose this challenge, Anos decided to accept it. Episode 2 Basically, to beat him, Anos needs to find out who he believes is the son of God, and he will confirm whether this is the truth or not. And the year will have the right to make 18 guesses in this game. The loser of this challenge will not be able to use their magical powers for 5 seconds. And the rules of the game are very basic, being that you can't give up, you can't cry, and you can't try to distract the other person by farting. Even though this challenge is difficult, Anos says he won't lose, so the two form a pact using Zetch, so neither of them will be able to escape these conditions. The game starts and on Misa's side, we see that the guy was ordered to take Misa's origin. Ray asks why he wants to do that, so the guy said it's because she's the child born to the great spirit Leno. Being Misa, the bearer of the origin who can control all spirits, Ray asked how the guy in front of him got half of these magic swords. Then the scene cuts to Eleanor who is facing a very complicated enemy. He had made his own puppet friends, but Eleanor cancelled his magic. To make everything worse, the enemy wanted to take the little girl next to Eleanor and dissect 
protect her, as he believes she is the receptacle to receive a god. Upon hearing this, Eleanor promises to never forgive this guy whose name I don't even know. And following, with the suspects being this divine vessel, we see that Misha and Sasha are also being confronted, but they don't believe that a god created them. Then, Enos began his first guess, saying that the son of God is one of his subordinates. His enemy says he is correct, but Enos knows that this may be the only lie his enemy can tell in this challenge. Then he uses some more guesses to see if these really are a child of God, but the enemy's lie can be for anything, and the enemy even boasts about it, saying that this is a duel of intellect. That's why he can't be so predictable. After he says this, we see Lay's battle against his enemy starting. He uses an appealing shield that can destroy the person's origin. Lay tries to destroy the power of this shield, but he ends up destroying his own origin. On Eleanor's side, the enemy uses zombie magic again, and to make matters worse, she can't eliminate them otherwise her friends will really die. Therefore, she is forced to flee and look for a way to end the enemy's magic without attacking her friends. They go outside the place, but the enemy uses a magic that starts to suck the energy of people in a certain area, thus decreeing an end to them. On Misha and Sasha's side, the enemy was using the Sword of the Unlimited to attack the two, in a way that they themselves do not understand. In response, the two sisters begin to use their skills together to confront her, but the enemy alone manages to pressure both of them, even man managing to cause non-fatal damage to Sasha. In addition to striking her, the enemy also sealed her eyes from her destruction. Out of nowhere, Misha tries to hold her back, but the enemy is strong enough to break free and strike her back. Back in Anos, he was trying to unravel the mystery behind the Son of God. And even though he was pressured by the enemy who set up a very interesting game to defeat him, Anos was still having fun with it all. However, he realized that the enemy was stealing to lie about his guesses, so our protagonist decided to interrupt the game. And because of that, he had his magic sealed for five seconds. However, even with his magic sealed, our protagonist is still an invincible character. At least the enemy thought they had managed to eliminate Melhanes. However, Anos had already used his hacks to save him. Thus, the fresh start with the victory of our main characters begins. First, Misha recreates Delsgate Castle, becoming an appealing character on her own. Lei didn't die, as he has several origins, being himself the great hero. And on Eleanor's side, she uses the magic of obtaining power through the emotions of her partners to obtain a large amount of magic and directly attack the enemy. Lei hit the enemy right in the chest. Misha, with her castle Deusgate, froze her enemy and turned her into a piece of ice. After defeating his enemy, Lei went to kill him, but the enemy killed himself to reincarnate. Eleanor, after defeating the enemy, used magic to make her friends return to normal. And going back to Anos, we see that he didn't save Melhanes, but rather, he created a pseudo-origin for him. And all of this was done in the first moment he saw Melhase being fatally hit by the enemy. In short, the duel of intellect had already been lost by the enemy from the beginning. Upon discovering this, the enemy tries to commit suicide, but Anos revives him like a little bird that can only tell truths. And so, he discovers that this enemy's objective was only to reduce reduce Anos' combat power by eliminating Melhase. And this attack only happened because the people of Azeshin still believe and fear the existence of Avu's Dilhevia. So, to solve this, Anos starts discussing with Melhase some ideas to solve these problems without triggering a new war, like maybe announcing to everyone that Ava's Dilhevia is fake, or that the hero canon is alive. At the end of this episode, Amelhias tells Anos that Shin, his right-hand man, is alive and is waiting for him in the forest of the Great Spirit. Furthermore, Lei gave Anos that strange sword that the enemy was using, which is a sword that joins with another one that Misa had and becomes one of Shin's swords. Melhase wanted to have warned him about this beforehand, but Anos was busy renovating the underground dungeon of his Delsgate castle, and when asked what he did, Anos said he built a city where the 10,000 Zeshias can live together. Now that he's finished doing that, he goes to the place where Shin is, and since that god Nisgalia can't be left unsupervised, Anos intends to turn the next episode into a study trip to a Hartharn. Episode 3. A few days later, we see that Anos teleported his group of fans next to Deus Nuscalia to a green field. Now, they and the other main characters will have to go through a test to discover the mysteries that lead to the Great Forest. Everyone is divided into groups of four, and Misha and Sasha end up getting together from Anos. Out of nowhere, they see a child being punished by some guys because she has been spreading information that the fantasy forest exists and everyone believes that this forest is just fantasy. Anos saves the little girl 
and then asks her how to get to that city, and she seems to know, yet she wants to go to that city with them. She lost her memory, and suddenly she was in this city, and after finding out about this forest, she felt she should go there to find out more about herself. After hearing this, Anos decides to take the girl there. Then he asked if she knows anything about a fog. She said that this fog appears during the eclipse, and this event will occur in nine days, for just three minutes. As expected, Anos uses his absolute power to make the eclipse happen soon. After all, Moving a planet is no big deal for him. After doing this, Anos teleports everyone to the mist place, and the girl isn't even surprised by Anos' magic because for her, it's as if she already knew it. There, Anos asks if she knows anything about the spiritual beings that hide in the mist. So Lena says Tithy spirits like new things, even laughing at discrepant things. Upon hearing this, Misha decides to tell a bad joke and asks everyone a laugh. But before the bad idea is put into practice, more Anos followers arrive. So the years ask everyone to contain their best jokes. The first to try was Misa who told a joke, which was responded to romantically by Lei. After that, Eleanor asked her daughter to try and she imitated Sasha and Misha. Soon after, Anos fans appeared. They had some sticks and they were the sticks to dance and sing in his name. However, this stick of years is a bit suggestive, so the girls are embarrassed, and that was enough to make these fairies appear laughing at the Bateo do Anos. When looking at our protagonist, they quickly recognize him as the demon king of tyranny and decide to take him to the forest of the great spirit. Along the way, Anos asks about the demon Shin Reglia, but the Tithi say they don't know him. And moving on, the Tithi say that the girl who accompanies Anos looks like the great spirit, but she is already dead so it doesn't make sense. Furthermore, the Tithi smelled the great spirit on Misa, and the girl said, she was the legitimate daughter of the spirit Leno. And when Misa asked if the fairies know who her father is, the fairies left, saying this is a secret, and arriving at the place they wanted, they find several demon kings, and out of nowhere, the entrance door disappears. The most bizarre thing is when a face appears in a tree claiming to be the teacher who will teach us about the spirits. And now, everyone will only be able to leave this place after graduating. In addition, those who pass will be able to talk to the king of the spirits. Upon hearing this, Anos orders the tree to perform only one test at once, which he and all his subordinates will pass. One of the demon kings tries to say that it was foolish to do so, but Anos reminds him that he has never lost in his life. Dissatisfied, the demon proposes a bet with Anos and our protagonist is so confident in his victory that he even bets on his origin in exchange for some information. After closing the contract with the demon, Anos talks a little with the girl without memories and decides to help her recover her memories. And using the time they have, Eleanor says that everyone needs to study, so they go to where the books were in Anos, as always, surprises everyone, reading the books in just one second. After that, he focuses on teaching everyone everything about the Great Forest. A while later, the test begins and Anos realizes that his companions are having difficulties, so he finishes the test quickly to see the question they are having to answer. The enemy demon tries to say that Anos is cheating, but he had already finished his test a long time ago. When the tests were collected, Anos and all his companions scored above the maximum. The enemy demon tried to understand how they got this grade by answering answering everything wrong. But that was simple. Anos used a sword that abolishes reason to turn a blank page into a perfect note. Honestly, the author of this anime exaggerates so much that I even laugh. After that, Anos proved that his enemies stole, and because of all this stealing, the tree decided to pass the test. Episode 4 Now that the first test has been completed, Anos has received a message from Melhase informing that a broadcast warning everyone that Avos Delhevia is fake will take place. And continuing with the tree's trials now, she wants everyone to be tested by the spirits and I thought it was just a written test. Bullshit. The second test is very simple. It has 20 stairs and only 5 of them led to the king of spirits. This challenge seems to rely on luck, but Anos decides to make his own luck, which was obviously at risk due to his enemies who wanted to hinder him. Because of this, he turned all his companions into years and let them enter each of the doors. He entered the right door, but Lena, who had entered through another door, appears in front of him and says she remembered that all doors have shortcuts that lead to the King of Spirits. Anos passes this information on to everyone and follows the path towards the King of Spirits. Along with the girl whose face is hidden, they find an invisible door and enter it. At that moment, the girl starts to remember that she has been here several times. And now more than ever, she really needs to see the King of Spirits. However, when one of those demons from before comes forward, now with a female personality, she asks Anos to help her save her other half. A total madness that is difficult to explain. I just know that as always, Anos promises to do everything. Very close by, 
Lei was getting close to the place where the King of Spirits stays, but out of nowhere they were surprised by a monster that decided to let them pass. And as incredible as it may seem, Lei gets to the King of Spirits first and apparently, this King of Spirits looks like a Delhevia grandparent who appeared in the first season, and when Lei tries to talk to him, the voice of the ugly tree appears and says that another ordeal needs to be done. This time, Lei needs to break the helmet of the King of Spirits with one of these spiritual swords. Meanwhile, Anos went past that same sinister wolf from before. But for Anos, he wanted to carry out an ordeal. In response, our protagonist protects the girl, accepts the challenge, and easily passes the enemy's ordeal. However, the wolf somehow managed to take the girl away from Anos' protection and take her somewhere. On Lei's side, he was having trouble facing the King of Spirits, as he was using a weapon that sealed his origins. So Misa decided to act to help her loved one. At that moment her body transformed and Misa found her true form as the daughter of a spirit. Soon after, she began to use a magic that transforms her love into power for Lei to use. And with all this power, Lei manages to hit the enemy's helmet. But he doesn't give up and seals Lei, and then hits Misa right in the middle of her origin. Meanwhile, Anos was having to deal with yet another enemy, thinking he could defeat him. This time the enemy wanted to use ancestral magic against Anos. However, Guy was too stupid to think that he could single-handedly defeat the being who single-handedly defeated even time. In response to this stupidity, Anos defeated him. Episode 5 After that, Anos stood in front of the spirit king who removed her helmet and showed herself to be the Leno spirit herself. However, she seems corrupted and is also using the name Avos Delhevia since Anos himself disappeared. She takes all of Anos' subordinates and he is forced to retreat. To make everything worse, this Avas Delhevia was created using Misa's body. All of this because of that tradition thing, which happened even in the first season. Now, half of Misa is the fake demon king and the other half is Misa. To save it, our protagonist intends to defeat only the half that represents Avus. Out of nowhere, our main characters are placed in a tree trap, and the tree only did this because it could not allow the daughter of the King of Spirits to be killed. And when Anos decides to leave that place, an old subordinate of his appears to confront him, and on Anos' side, that old demon called Aegis appears claiming to have saved Lena from kidnapping. And now, Aegis, the King of Hell, will fight this guy while Anos continues on his way. Our protagonist does this and later on, he comes across Lena safe and sound. She still wants to go to the Spirit King, so she calls on those little fairies, and asks them to help her get out of this prison. The little ones agree, as long as it is kept secret. Now, this guy Avus is trying again to control the demons, but there are those who no longer believe in him and only believe in Anos. The entire city was being affected by this, which was a danger even for Anos' family. Inside, that teacher who challenged Anos was suffering from being transformed into a hybrid. Those who were hitting her repeated the same phrases that she herself had said several times ago. And all this continued, until Anos' mother tried to stop the guys from continuing. Anos' father also came along, but he's too weak to face these guys. However, our protagonist arrived and did with these demons. Exactly what they promised to do with our protagonist's family, which was to separate their members into several pieces. In this way, Professor Hybrida was saved and was taken to Anos' house. There she received the best of care, and our protagonist's father was happy that his son brought so many women home. Now, our main characters need to enter Desilgade's castle and defeat Avus. Before our protagonist leaves to do this, that disgusting teacher asks him to kill her immediately. And because she defended Anos' mother from just a single blow, our protagonist said that if her distorted vision ever changes, he will return her to her origin. Having said that, he leaves through an underground passage that leads directly to the city of Zeshias that he created. There, he goes to a passage that is connected to the dungeon that already existed underground in his castle. But before leaving, he warns that the enemies must already be waiting for him. Everyone agrees and Anos teleports everyone, so they arrive at the dungeon and soon come face to face with Rivest and the new teacher accompanied by a woman escorting them to see if our main characters were passing by. Obviously, Anos hid everyone with magic, and when he looked at Rivis' arm, he saw that the guy had left a sign for him, using the divergent symbol on his clothes. Upon realizing this, Anos gave the signal that he was there, and thus, Rivist and the teacher separated themselves from those being manipulated by Avus. So before acting, Anos asked the location of three people, being the masked demon king who claims to be the king of spirits, Escalia, and the false Avus. 
Navu's Delhevia. Furthermore, Enos will use time manipulation magic to investigate what is happening, as the origin of Mises' birth is the rumor and tradition of Avu's Delhevia, something from 2,000 years ago that was spread by the hero canon. And even though Misa is only 15 years old, Enos believes he will find an explanation for all this by going back in time, and his fear is to end the rumors and tradition about the demon king of tyranny and Misa ends up getting caught by the disease of the spirits and starts to disappear. To use a time spell, Enos needs no enemies to be nearby. So, Rivest asks Enos to use powerful magic that leaves him injured, so he can lie about his location. He does this, and the guy is afflicted with pain he would never feel before. After being helped by Rivest, Enos promised to make his wish come true. With everyone far away from him, Enos goes to the place he wanted and casts a spell that takes everyone 2,000 years into the past. To avoid being discovered, Lei uses his own magic to hide Enos' origin, and our protagonist uses a magic that makes them undetectable so that they can freely walk through the past without changing the course of things. The only ones who are allowed to interact with the past are Eleanor and Zeshia. There, they see Shin wearing the same clothes that Avu's wears, and he was accompanying the Great Spirit. Great Spirit wanted to eat some candy that ran out, but Zeshia went there and gave her that candy, and in return, Zeshia received some cookies. Lena was with Anos, and he asks her if she recognizes that guy in the mask. In response, she says no. So our main characters follow them to find out what happened. There they see the two of them dealing with some wolves and years of nothing decides to teach Sasha how to use light magic that doesn't attract attention. However, the fact that he gets close to her makes her lose control of her eyes a little, and this attracts the attention of Shin and the fairy. To solve this problem, Anos transforms into a child, and appears to the the two claiming to be Anoshu, he introduces his friends and says he is just a traveler. The great fairy laughs at the little imitator of the demon king of tyranny and all his friends. Shin, for some reason, follows the script, pretending to believe that little Anoshu is a good person. Our protagonist goes ahead and says that his goal is to cure the memory loss of his friend named Lena. However, Leno, even though she is the mother of the spirits, has no information about this girl. But in private with Anoshu and the mother of spirits, he says that Lena is Fran, the fairy of love, a spirit that gives form to unrequited love. And the mother of spirits pretended not to know because she knows that the fairy of love disappears if she realizes that she is the fairy of love. First, she needs to remember about love. Her explanation is interrupted by a monster appearing and as Lei was without a weapon, Enos asks Shin to lend him his weapon. The guy does this, and upon seeing Lei's strength, Shin decides to leave this sword with him, and the payment for using it will be very simple. Lei will have to give him a scratch. Imagine how beautiful a world would be where you pay your debts by attacking others. It would basically be berserk. Episode 7 After the wolves attack, the great spirit became thoughtful that Nuskalia was still alive after what Enos did to him. In response, Shin said he would protect her until she was no no longer in danger. Out of nowhere, Leno receives the news that her grandmother is leaving. Thanks to his arrival in the past, everyone was able to gain the leaves of wisdom to fight. Anos just couldn't receive one, as he already won one, and the grandpa tree was disappearing, for the war traditions about it are losing their strength. Before leaving, Grandma said that one day Leno would have to choose between traditions or his own desires. Grandma is satisfied with her choice. Now she wants to know Leno's wish. After that, Leno was sad, but her tears give life to to new children, and the birth of a new life makes her happy. Thus, a tree based on the teaching was born. After all this, Leno asked how long the years would stay there with them, and he said he wanted to stay until the Lena issue was resolved. After Shin and Asirido left, Anos went with Eleanor and Zeshia to investigate something. He went to the teaching tree in there. He asked Zeshia to find the book that talks about the fairy of love, and as she searched, we see Leno talking to Shin about what he would do after she gets to safety. In response, he said that he would go in search of his master by reincarnating 2,000 years in the future. Together, the two of them went to an open field in there. Leno showed Shin the only flowers capable of absorbing her tears. She tries to make Shin become a kinder person. However, there isn't much love in his heart. So when he waters the plants, they start to wither. She asks him to think about love, even if it is for the demon king of tyranny. In response, he said he served his master out of gratitude and not out of love, his body now being but a sword. In response, she told him to be happy and play 
and also showed some spirits that they are happy that he saved them. Shin tries to back away, but Leno makes him play, messing with his confidence. He loses the challenge and Leno gets the chance to ask him for something. However, out of nowhere, one Erdemade, the king of conflagration appears wanting to talk to them about the divine race. This Erdemade wanted to help Nuscalia obtain the supreme sun from the great mother spirit. However, Shin would not allow him to do so. Very close by, Inos was watching all this, and in front of him, Shin asked Erdemade, to take him to Nuscalia. The guy does it, but they need to fulfill some conditions for Nuscalia to appear. How to go to the center of the lake? Well, they do what Erdemade asks, and as expected, something bizarre happens. Because according to Ertame, to make the god Nuscalia appear, he needs to put Leno's life in danger, as she is a very important being for this god. However, Shin doesn't let that happen and plunges his sword into Ertame's chest. But inside Ertame's body was Nuscalia himself, all because during the death of this god, Ertame himself offered his body for the guy to take shelter. And so, as Shin requested, Nuscalia actually appears. However, he still doesn't seem to be a match for Shin's power. But instead of fighting, Nuscalia opens his mouth and start saying that Shin is not actually a demon and that he is a magic sword created by demons. And that's exactly why Shin doesn't feel love. He's just a magic sword. So Nuscalia offers Shin what only those who hold the power of order can give, the fulfillment of Shin's desire to be able to feel love. However, Shin responds to this by saying that he doesn't need love because for him his body is just a sword. He cuts off the enemy's head, but again he escapes from being killed by them. After all that, Leno started to apologize to Shin for judging him for not feeling love. She promised to teach him what love is, but Shin still didn't understand her sadness, much less these things about love. In the end, Leno said that he believes that Shin should be able to obtain love, and she promised to try her best to help him find out more about it. In response, Shin just agreed to help her with this, thinking that this is another order from the person he must protect. Episode 8 After that, we see a little boy with blue eyes trying to see the Demon King. However, the King's guard said he had died and told the boy to leave. After this small scene, we see Anos asking Leno if it is possible to change the traditions that give life to a spirit, while it is still alive. In response, she herself said that she doesn't know. The only thing she can say is that a rumor contrary to that of a spirit can cause it to cease to exist. However, using the truth, the rumor of a spirit can end up changing. While Anos was studying what to do, Lei and Shin were dueling until Leno and Anos arrived there. And to make Leno happy, Shin followed Lei's advice and said he would defeat his opponent to return to her side. As their battle continues, Shin notices that Lei evolves a lot during the battle, having in just one day acquired even some skills from him. In response to this, Shin decided to use his true power. Lei defended himself, but he was still caught, as this ability cuts the ephemeral past. And after using it, Shin turned his back and thanked Lei for being able to show this technique that he learned after losing to the great hero. Soon after, Shin went to water the plant of love, but because he had no love they withered again. And this time, Leno didn't keep telling him to use love, because she knows he doesn't carry that within himself. After that, Anos went for a walk with Misha in search of the goddess of creation called Militia. She is the goddess who created the world and over the years, they made the barrier that separates the races, being one of the few allies that Anos had. And following the path to his castle, Anos witnessed that boy from before being taken to receive punishment. This is happening to the boy, as he was a prisoner of Anos, and our protagonist recognizes that he should have freed him before disappearing. The boy was receiving a harsh punishment from the demons. After all, the demons have a lot of hatred for those who caused many casualties to their people. When the boy was going to be burned alive, Anos saved him, and the man in front of him asked Anos why he saved a boy who carries the blood of Jirga, a human who killed many demons without any mercy. In response, Anos tells Davidra that if this boy was the one who killed his child, he will allow his revenge. However, this boy is innocent and killing him is doing the same thing that humans did to demons. Angry, Davidra tries to take out his anger on Anos, but he takes all the blows and stays on his feet, and then gives his speech, saying that this kind of hatred is something that has no end, and the only way to get rid of this endless cycle of hate is to stop killing. In response, the Davidra attempts once again to eliminate the human, but Anos stops his blow using his demonic gaze. Seeing these eyes makes Davidra get emotional and cry out for his master. However, Anos says he is just a little traveler, and Davidra recognizes that his master loves travelers. Everyone kneels and apologizes to Anos for not being able to forget the hate and for not being able to protect him. In response, 
Anos said that 2,000 years from now, a wonderful world will be waiting for them all. After saving him, Anos decided to take up his reason-abolishing sword to do some rather tyrannical things. But before he did anything, the human boy woke up and informed the years everything that happened to him. So, as the boy now owes Anos one, and he needs to act so that in the future he is not dead. Anos decides to use the hero Igareth to save the life of the other demon king, carrying the rumors about him with him. After performing this trick with the reason-abolishing sword, Igareth ceases to exist in this reality. After doing so, a message on the wall about love for the demon king is revealed. When evaluating this magical writing, Anos understands that they need to stay in this reality until nightfall. And according to Anos, even Shin himself can obtain love if he wants, as the goddess Militia herself has said, that if this were a world where you cannot have love, it would be better to destroy that world. Most of the gods ignore the living beings of this planet, however, the order of the world is made by her affection. Not only that, but Anos promised the goddess Militia that he would end all the sadness and destruction that the gods allow happen in mass. Anos reveals the true message behind, and says that this message of love was from the goddess to him. He knows that the goddess left many important things for him. However, before anything else, he took Misha to the place where all those he was unable to protect rest. There, Anos declared to everyone that peace has come, and that they can all be proud, as their efforts were not for nothing. To improve the climate, Misha fills this place with flowers with her creation magic, and tells Anos that she can feel that the hearts of everyone there continue to support him. In the end, Anos thanked everyone and said that without them none of this would be possible. Episode 9 After that, time passed and the events of the past were revealed. After Anos ceased to exist, the hero decided to create avenues to end the cycle of infinite hatred between demons and humans. The hero asked Shin to support him, but he said he wouldn't do that, but he also wouldn't hinder him. After this meeting, the hero told Leno that Shin changed, and she told the hero that it was because she taught him about love. At that moment, Leno realized that she loved Shin and decided to tell him that. She madly confessed her love for him, and he replied saying that he doesn't feel love, but that somehow he feels comfortable next to her. However, this time they will spend together will end, as he will eliminate Leno's enemies and then reincarnate. Leno says this is unfair, so Shin promises to fulfill any of her wishes. She asks him to marry her and Shin accepts. So they actually have a ceremony and get married, in front of all our main characters, and even a passionate kiss. After that, they obviously need to have their first night together. But since they are not ready for that yet, Leno asked Shin to tell her how he met Anos. And basically Shin was always powerful and never had any interest in anyone, until he met the Demon King and couldn't defeat him. At the time, Shin realized that he was always looking for someone to be the owner of the god-slaying mortal sword, and Anos was the only one who gave Shin the reason to fight. After the chat, Leno called Shin to play Bounce House on the bed. This was done, and a few months later, we discovered that the mother of spirits became pregnant with a demon, and for the child to be born alive, she needs to find a way to find her traditions and spread them, so that this child is born alive without using her origin. Shin chose the name for the child, whether male or female. However, even so, Shin decided to reincarnate. Leno, being the mother of spirits, decided to give birth to a being that is half-demon. To make everything worse, at the moment Shin was reincarnated, an enemy appeared in front of him. It had to be Nuscalia again. He creates a legend and a tradition for Leno's child, making her the one based on the Avus Dilhevia that the hero canon wanted to be. At that moment, the child leaves her belly and begins to be born. So... In her last effort, Leno used magic to try to send this child to a time when Anos is alive. Shin arrived to help her, but this time it was too late. In the end, Shin decided to spread rumors about Avus, even if it was against his master. All this to protect the child who from now on will represent Leno's life, who ended up dying as a result of these events. She left and Shin understood how foolish he was for not staying by her side and making her happy. This love story makes everyone who watched it up close cry, and now that Anos knows this, this, he can find a way to resolve this matter. Episode 10 So they set out to resolve everything, but soon a voice announced to Anos that the students in white uniforms would start to be killed one by one, and that Anos should go alone to stop this. And according to Anos, enemies must not have the reason abolishing sword, so they want to buy time. So, Anos uses magic on the girls who wanted to go to the execution site, so they can become undetectable and go there, while Anos tried to reach the King of Spirits. But on the way, they are detected by some enemies, who are quickly defeated and immobilized by Anos. After that, Anos finally met with Avus Dilhevia, 
accompanied by Lei, and to stop Anos, Avos promised to start eliminating students in white clothes. And when the execution was to begin, the demon who was going to execute the person in front of him was actually Davidra, and he would never forget that his true demon king is a person who doesn't kill people without reasons, therefore, he rebels against everyone. Furthermore, the demon that was going to be killed is that little boy that Anos saved and reincarnated 2,000 years ago, and now, during this battle, he himself saved Davidra. Due to Avu's brainwashing, the manipulated warriors ended up being easily defeated, with Misha recreating Del's Gate Castle and her absolute magic, which can even transform her enemies into ice kittens. Avu's tried to show more hostages, but with a simple trip to the past, Anos was able to come up with a plan to deal with it. Though to end everything, Lei would use his sword to cut destiny and solve the problem. However, this was a trap that was avoided by Anos. When he does this, reality changes changes and Anos faces Shin, who is now Anos' enemy. Our protagonist promises to save Misa and solve everything. Shin accepts the truth and that his master can save Misa, but he still wants to be killed by Anos' hands, so he can go to the same place where Leno rests. To challenge Anos, Shin uses his best attack, something he has spent his entire life perfecting. After defeating him, Anos said that now in this world he has a father. He may be a silly and fun guy, but for everything in his life he wants to see him alive and happy. Therefore, Shin must live and make Misa happy. Shin wonders if Misa would accept him as a father, and Anos reinforces this feeling by saying yes. That girl always wanted to meet him. In response, Shin said that his master has become stronger and kinder than he was 2,000 years ago. So they join hands and set out to fulfill their true dreams. Episode 11 Meanwhile, the hero canon was going all out to Sima do Avus. Avus using Misa's body tries to convince Lei to become hers, as she is his beloved Misa. However, he says that Misa is still alive inside her fighting. But Anos has had enough, putting this god to rest in the corner. The god stands up and says that the whole world is based on order, and that his order will not be marred, and that everything so far has gone according to plan. However, Anos says that it is not he who will eliminate the god this time, but rather his right-hand man, thus avenging his wife. Shin goes after him, but the god now has his powers back, and this ends up not being an easy task. Out of nowhere, that piece of the Book of Love, which Leno had ripped out and given to Shin, fell on the floor and when he tried to pick it up, the guy started setting Shin on fire. At that moment, that spirit without memories that was next to Anos all this time appears, and during all this time she was alive. But she needed the little push of love to go back to being who she is. Shin continues to fight, and Leno helps him by asking for help from his spirit friends. Furthermore, Leno's grandmother also came back to life due to Anos' actions. She supports Leno with her power, and all the spirits support Shin. The battle continues and Shin, now using the power of love and friendship, manages to defeat the god. In response, the god tries to change Shin's order, but unfortunately for this god, this time, Shin used the blade that divides the origin in a hellish way, causing fatal damage to the origin of this god. Meanwhile, Kanan continued fighting against Avus, and even though all of his origins are destroyed, he remains focused on releasing the Misa within her. So, to bring her back, Shin uses the skill he learned from Misa's father. This ability can separate Misa's origin into two. Avus tries to get back together with Misa, but the girl reveals how important everyone she loves are including Lei and his friends. In the end, Lei tries to destroy Avus, but she escapes and finally obtains the broken sword that tears apart logic, which was kept in Anos' castle. However, Anos arrives to start the final round, now having the help of his right-hand man and Lena, the great mother of all spirits. Episode 12 Even at a disadvantage, Avus was still confident because of the sword he obtained. The two begin to fight, using the same powers. At first it seemed like the two were on the same level, but in the end, Avus was just a spirit created using the legends and traditions of the name Avus. And being a farce, Avus is not a match for our protagonist. So to defeat him, Avus decided to sacrifice himself to give his power to the god Nuskalia. So, the god Nuskalia has returned again and now, he is using the power of the Castle of Descade, plus the Cutting Sword of Reason to try to go against our protagonist. However, Anos doesn't accept this and on a white screen. Anos says that Nuskalia is afraid of him. The god tries to say that he is the Order, and that he is not capable of feeling these things. So Anos, to finally resolve this, reaches into the origin of his former subordinate, 
who is within the god and offers him a wish. This was exactly what his rogue subordinate wanted and thus, the years will fulfill his subordinate's dream of completing a spell that can usurp the power of a god. This is done and everything is resolved. Thus, Anos' former subordinate comes back to life and the god disappears again saying that the entire world will be destroyed because of Anos. After that, Leno spoke to her daughter and after that Leno disappeared again. So before talking about Leno, Anos decided to solve Misa's problem, changing the rumors and traditions that keep Misa alive. Once that's done, he brings Leno back. After all the legends and traditions about the Mother of Spirits will never cease to exist. And with Leno alive it was easy to bring Misa back. A few days later, Misa and Shin will announce to everyone that Avu's is fake and this time. Shin can finally have a word with his daughter. After all this excitement, it was finally announced to everyone. Everyone's true rank and now acting as the true demon king of tyranny, Anos gave his tyrannical orders to everyone. The first is that no class is superior to another and the other rules were that people should seek to do good and allow others freedom. In case anyone goes against this, they received a direct punishment from Anos. Thus, the anime ends with Anos' followers singing, and Shin being a protective father towards Misa, protecting her from Lei's romantic advances. At the end of the anime, years realize that a part of his memory is missing, and this is probably due to his version of the future, who has already made other trips helping him, and he himself doesn't know. Thus the anime ends with Anos walking towards a girl at the highest point of a shining staircase.